Trump's speech at the Libertarian Convention was absolutely brilliant. Well, you're a Trump supporter, so of course you would say that. 90% of that speech was him getting booed by the majority Libertarian crowd, and the only people who cheered the entire time were Trump supporters who only showed up to see him personally. ...to a bunch of Libertarians booing him. But by the time he left the night, he had given them an opportunity for once in their lives as Libertarians to actually get on the scoreboard and win for one. You mean like this? You know, it's funny. The last two election cycles, neither Republicans nor Democrats even acknowledged the Libertarian Party, but y'all are attacking us right out the gate this time around for a good reason. The Libertarian Party is the fastest growing party in the United States. And last year, Lily Wu became the first Libertarian Party member to be the elected as the mayor of any major U.S. city. And if we zoom out to the international stage, Javier Malay was elected to be the president of Argentina, which made him the first Libertarian to become the head of any nation state. We don't need Trump to win. The Republicans and Democrats right now have this country so divided, people want an alternative and libertarians provide the best alternative to the two-party system right now. If Republicans and Democrats were not feeling the heat, they wouldn't feel the need to attack us right after our national convention. Y'all would still be ignoring us just like y'all did in 2020 and 2016. This could vote for a gay man who's in favor of open borders, abolishing ICE, abortion, bringing children to drag... First of all, he never said anything about open borders. He does want to go back to our more traditional immigration policy like we had 100 years ago with Ellis Island. If somebody wants to come here legally for an honest living or a better life, they shouldn't have to jump through hoops to do so. As far as abolishing ICE, do you know anything about libertarian? How many agencies do we need to protect our country? We have the FBI, the CIA, the Department of Homeland Security. To an extent, we could put the responsibility of ICE under any one of these agencies. What's next? You're going to complain because libertarians want to get rid of the ATF, the IRS, the NSA? Shit, considering how long it's taken the TSA to approve my Twit card over a charge that did not lead to a conviction, I'd like to abolish them too. Yeah, so much for small government conservatives. Cutting government agencies has led to record low inflation for the Argentinian economy. That's something we could really use here in the U.S., don't you think? And as far as you attacking him for being gay, I thought conservatives were past that by now, but apparently not. Hell, Chase Oliver isn't even the first openly gay man to run as a libertarian for president. I fail to see how his sexuality in any way, shape, or form has anything to do with his abilities as a president. As far as him being pro-choice, so what? Abortion is by far the most divisive issue within the libertarian community. If you don't realize that, you haven't spent a lot of time around libertarians. Of course he's going to lose to pro-life libertarians by taking that position. But if he was pro-life, he would likely lose to pro-choice libertarians. The reality is, if you're a libertarian, taking up a solid position on the abortion debate is a no-win situation for you within your own community. And I don't know why conservatives can't get their mind out of the gutter when it comes to drag queens. You do realize the wide majority of drag queens only do it as a performance art, not a fetish, right? Are you telling me you wouldn't let your kids watch Mrs. Doubtfire? For that matter, if Robin Williams was still alive and he decided to do this drag queen story hour as Mrs. Doubtfire, you wouldn't let your kids go see it? Fuck, I'd like to see that. And look, I get it. There are a lot of drag queens who have been exposed for grooming and being child predators, but at the same time, same could be said for Catholic priests. Is it fair to judge all Catholics by the standard that a few bad apples have set? Absolutely not. At the end of the day, it is the parents' responsibility to do their due diligence and vet every adult they let around their kids. The one thing I can't agree with you on is your statement about hormone blockers. That I'm not okay with it, but it's a rather minor thing in my book. Especially considering I've already confronted him in person about this. It's not because he wants to push this stuff onto other people's kids, but because he's perfectly okay with letting parents make the decision on what's best for their own children instead of the government. So while I personally disagree with him on this, his reasoning behind it is something I can empathize with. As far as gender reassignment surgery for minors, he's completely against it. 
So there is a line he draws in the sand on this issue. It's just not where most conservatives would draw it. Any libertarians out there, don't cut off your own nose to spite your face. A vote for this guy, Chase Oliver, is a vote for Joe Biden. That is not how math works, my guy. A vote for Tweety Bird is not a vote for Superman, and a vote for Superman is not a vote for Peter Pan. A vote for Tweety is a vote for Tweety. A vote for Peter Pan is a vote for Peter Pan. And a vote for Superman is a vote for Superman. Do I really have to dumb it down by using cartoon characters to explain this to you and the Democrats? The people who vote for Chase Oliver are not going to vote for Trump anyway. Especially considering Chase Oliver is the most pro-gun candidate we have in the race right now. Or might take the firearms first and then go to court. Because that's another system. Because a lot of times by the time you go to court, it takes so long to go to court to get the due process. Yeah, I'd like to keep my firearms, thank you very much. Donald Trump literally passed more gun control than Barack Obama. The Republicans only oppose gun control when the Democrats want to pass it. They're perfectly okay with it when they're in control. Everything that you care about to get markedly worse for the next four years. Again, Trump is not pro-gun. He's okay with gun control and red flag law. Trump had four years to pardon and free Ross Ulbricht, and he didn't do it. But I do distinctly remember him taunting Edward Snowden back in 2016, stating, We do have a death penalty here in the U.S. for trade. Yeah, I highly doubt that Trump has any intention of freeing or pardoning any enemies of the U.S. government. You seriously expect me to believe that Trump has any intention of appointing any libertarians to his cabinet? Yeah, sure. If elected president... I will get a special prosecutor to go after Hillary Clinton. Mm-hmm. How'd that turn out? I will build the wall and make Mexico pay for it. Nope. You made me pay for it with my tax dollars. And if he was serious about putting libertarians in his cabinet, why didn't he say which ones he was thinking about and what position he was going to give them? I might have been able to believe him if he had said something like, I'm going to make Larry Sharp Surgeon General or Spike Cohen Secretary of State, but he did it. It was all hot air and smoke. He has no intention of actually keeping that promise. Say what you want about Chase Oliver. He is still the most libertarian candidate in the race. He's the only candidate who actually opposes gun control. He's the only candidate who wants to eliminate victimless crime. He is the only candidate who would actually pardon enemies of the U.S. government like Edward Snowden, Ross Albrecht, or Julian Assange. Trump has no reason to keep the campaign promises he is making to the Libertarian Party because even if he does get elected, this is his last term. He has no incentive to keep these campaign promises in the hopes that we would support him in 2028. Bottom line, Republicans are red, Democrats are blue. Neither major party gives a damn about me or you. Be bold. Vote gold.